This is Nina Curley of WAMDA Media. I'm here with Joey Ito, the director of the MIT Media Lab and also a WAMDA board member. Joey, how are you? Very good. Excellent. We just had an event here on Thursday at the Pavilion. We had our WAMDA Mix and Mentor event, and we had a panel at the end in which you were chatting about your philosophies on planning for the future. We spend a lot of our life planning, but you've talked about the importance of being a nowist. What do you mean by that? I think as the world has become really complex, um, and after the internet especially, I think we can't predict things very well. And good things are bad things, so we often call them black swans. But um, as the future becomes less and less predictable, and our plans become harder and harder to make, and less and less um, uh, useful because they're often wrong, I think it becomes less important to try to predict what's going to happen and more important to be resilient and to be effective in reacting to whatever happens. And it's really more about agility than it is about sort of being strong and thoughtful and predictive. And so I think that whether you're a company or whether you're an individual, um, when, I, when I say I'm a nowist, it's, it's really being prepared for anything, I think is actually much more um, likely to be successful than to try to plan everything. How could I actively cultivate that mindset? I mean, apart from kind of searching down multiple paths of what could happen in the future and just sort of overanalyzing multiple scenarios, how can you just create that agile mindset? It's not about scenario planning. I mean, scenario planning can be one of the things you do, but it's, it's really about um, being ready to pivot. And so things that we used to think of as assets like lines of code and money and buildings and people, those are all liabilities when you think about it in the context of pivoting because if you want to change your business um, the, the, the more lightweight you are the better but also it's important to be multidisciplinary it's important to have a broad network it's important to know where everything is you don't want to have everything in your own warehouse but you want to know where to get everything when you need it or to know who to ask and that's all about searching it's all about building trust networks, but it's also about building a diverse network, because the more you're stuck in a silo, the less likely you can move. And so I think that that's, and, 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 that, and that's, that's, that's the kind of preparation I'm talking about. And how do you avoid that silo when you're talking about lines of code? I mean, when you're stuck with a certain developer or a certain mindset and you've already built a product, how can you make yourself more agile when it comes to coding? Well, there's, you know, there's technical things. So if you keep your, your code very object-oriented, if you don't focus on packages, like you know, big software packages and the ERP packages. If you own and write your own code, if it's test-driven development, so that you can move the things around and change things very quickly and dump chunk chunks of code and don't create too many dependencies. So there's a there's definitely a best practices um, around writing um, agile code, and it, it's it's and it's very much around the agile software movement. Um, and then a lot of it is is is, is um, having short sprints, so having one week, two weeks um, sprints rather than you know, spe specking it out, spending a year writing it, and then deploying it. So it's again, it's about agile software development. It's also the mindset of the um, product people and making sure that you're 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 testing, but you're iterating very quickly. But also looking at all of the peripheral areas as you as you go. Um, and it is about data driven um, and test driven design as well. How do you make personal decisions in your life? I mean, do you really focus on the now, focus on being agile? How do you decide to move in one direction or the other? Um, I usually try to make decisions very quickly based on the information that I have. And I don't spend too much time um, overanalyzing and overcollecting. And I, I, a lot of it's intuitive. And, and again, if you, if you do something very quickly and you fail, the, the cost um, of that failure is small, and so I tend to, you know, re re release early, release often. Um, another term people use it is ship it. Um, other people will say things like, um, like Reed Hoffman. I love his thing is instead of ready, aim, fire. It's aim, fire, aim, fire, aim, fire. But I think that the trick is if you get over this kind of fear of failure, um, you just go because you collect data and if you fail you can come back and, 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 and there aren't that many decisions if you make them quickly that um, you can't recover from and it's about making lots of decisions rather than making big ones occasionally. You're also an investor operating Yatni Labs. Um, when you make the decision to invest in a startup, do you look for this similar mindset? Um, well, yeah, I look for agility, um, but I also look for um, 
a lot of it is the personality of the entrepreneur. So I usually invest in entrepreneurs that I know or I know through my network. And um, um, but but there's a, there's a great diversity of successful entrepreneurs. Some of them are very technical. Um, some of them, you know, are, are very product oriented. But but typically the the best entrepreneurs that I know have a, a good sensibility of product, um, have agility, and have are 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 very decisive.